What is good, everybody? It is your boy, Pat the Designer, back at it again. And ladies and gentlemen, we got Darren Collison to talk a little NBA with us right after this. All one, all two, all three. Stop it! Did not do him like that! Mercy! Did you not get the memo? All right, if you are new to the channel, as always, please like the video, please subscribe to the page because we do talk Chicago sports weekly. We don't want you to miss a thing, so make sure that you hit that bell. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to jump right into this. Um... Uh, a player who, who I got to say, I enjoyed watching for a long time with them Sacramento Kings. Maybe not so much with Indiana. It, it was beating my balls up a little bit. But I enjoyed watching it with the Kings. Uh, I got to introduce point guard, former NBA point guard, Darren Collison. Darren, how you feeling, man? Man, thank you for having me, man. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. How, hey, how is the family, how is quarantine going out there? Because I know L.A. is going crazy right now. Yeah, quarantine is a little bit bittersweet. You know, you can't really do much. Right. You know, you can't really do what you want. But at the same time, you get to spend time with your family and, you know, do the things that you probably necessarily wouldn't do on a regular basis. But, you know, we're getting back to the basics. And, you know, that's just all about, you know, loving one another and doing the things that you didn't think you were going to do. Like, you know, going outside, taking walks. You right. know, and just, just, it's just enjoying time like you were, like when you were a little kid. Absolutely, absolutely. How have you guys been uh, uh, staying sane through it? Because I know with, uh, with at, at our house, you know, after you're sitting inside, you can only watch so much Netflix. So what have you guys been doing to kind of kind of keep things just just mellow in the mind? I doing a little bit of what you, what you said, just Netflix. You know, we probably been in the pool like twice a day. <laughs> probably the most I've been in the pool, um, you know, with my son and – you know, taking walks, like I said, yeah. um, you know, playing video games, watching movies. I mean, it's only so much you can do. But, you know, when you look back at these times, you're just going to appreciate and you start to ask yourself, like, you know, did you take use of this time and doing it the right way with your family? Absolutely. Absolutely. Have Have you guys uh, been watching The Last Dance at all? I have. Yeah. One of the, probably one of the best, if not the best documentaries I've seen. Hey, hey, what what are what are some of those? What are some of the the big things that have stood out about you? Maybe that that you looked at the NBA back then and was like, wow, that we we couldn't get away with that today. That wouldn't fly today. What are some of the stuff that maybe shocked you from the documentary? Well, I mean, uh, you know, a few things. I mean, the physical play. Um, yeah. You know, obviously, you know, the NBA is kind of geared away from that. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, you you seen you seen the scene with Michael Jordan smoking a cigar. You know, <laughs> I don't think many players can do that. You know, posting on social media, especially in the locker room. Right. Um, you know, but you know everything else. You know, you, you kind of see it is just behind the scenes. But you know, there are some things that you know the NBA kind of like stayed away from. Right. Absolutely. Now you mentioned the physical play. When you right. look at how the league was back then. Do you think you could have played and thrived in that kind of physical play back then? Um, you know, that's the question that you, people always ask and say such and such can't play in this area, but you never know until you take your first beating and how right. you respond to it. You know, we're all competitors. And, you know, obviously if, if that's what the game is and, you know, you're still trying to win, so be it. You know what I mean? For me personally, I always felt like, you know, you play to win the game and you try to compete at a high level. So if, if it's physical play, then you got to try to win on physical play territory. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's kind of that's kind of the stance I, I took with it, because I always look at how people always say LeBron couldn't do that then or Jordan couldn't do that then. When you when you look at the NBA and how it's changed, do you believe that we shouldn't have that that? kind of that GOAT conversation that everybody always brings up because the games are so different? Oh, oh yeah, most definitely. Um, you can kind of you, – you're never going to get the right answer. Right. So, I mean, you know, <clears throat> for fun debate, I mean, you know, all great players can play in any area, to be honest. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? They'll, they'll adapt. You know, one thing that people have to give great players credit is that they're willing to adjust and adapt to win the game, like I have mentioned. So – um, 
you know, when you talk about Kobe, LeBron, you know, Kevin Durant, what era they can play in, like, they'll they'll be able to adapt to any era and, and be successful. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, got Darren Collison here with me on Windy City Debris. <laughs> Let's bring it up to the modern day NBA because you you recently retired. It was a pretty big deal, but before <laughs> your retirement, I read a few reports that it was reported that you might be coming to uh, our Chicago Bulls. Was there any truth to that? Um, I, I was in talks with um with Zach Levine and obviously Daddy Zone, who's one of my favorite teammates. Mm-hmm. Um, we um we kind of spoke on the surface, you know, beforehand and, you know, there was a possibility that, you know, I, I could have went to Chicago. Um, obviously there's other teams too as well, but, you know, Zach Levine is a, is a player that I work with during the summer and, you know, daddy's young is one of my favorite teammates. So, you know, when we discussed, it wasn't a far fetched thing, you know, it was right. something that, you know, I saw myself, you know, playing in Chicago. Okay. 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 Not was, was there any, so it never went past the, the talking with the, the players. It never got up to the front office and, and the coaching staff and things like that. Uh, yeah, there was an offer. There was oh, an okay. offer. So okay. they were one of the teams that, you know, had offered and, you know, I couldn't make that choice. Was the, was the current front office that was in place at that time a deterrent at all? So Gar Form and John Paxson, were those guys at all a deterrent to you wanting to come to Chicago? Nah, I didn't know too much about, you know, what was going on and, you know, the the, the situation that they have right now. It, me, you know, I think for me personally, it was just about playing with, you know, Zach and playing with Darius. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. And and at all, did you talk to, to Jim Boylan at all? Have you had any relationship while you were in the league with Boylan? Do you – was there kind um, of – oh, go ahead. Nah, no, nah, not nah, sorry not to cut you off. Um, no, I never, I never spoke to Jim. Jim is a coach that I've, he's coached me before when I was with Indiana. He was the mm. assistant coach. Um, I think it was my second or third year um, in the NBA. And um, I know how enthusiastic of a coach he is. Um, he wasn't an issue or a problem, so right. to speak. You know I mean, so. When, 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 of course, as, as Bulls fans, Bulls fans see that the Chicago Bulls are losing. As with any team, when your team's losing, you always want to ask the coach. You always want to, uh, the coach is the problem. Uh, the GM's the problem. The front office is the problem. Is there just coaches in the league that are good coaches, but maybe not good to be head coaches? Do you think that that could be a situation that we're possibly seeing in Chicago? Um, I don't know. I think um, it's a combination of, everything you know it's not just the coach you know right. you gotta have a good system good players a good team your organization you know you can never just blame just one person obviously there's always a fall fallback guy for every situation in the nba and it's unfortunate but um you know it, it definitely comes down to the players that you have on the team and the camaraderie and the chemistry it's, it's, it's so much that goes into just winning a game right. and you can't just blame on one coach Right, right, right. Um, I, I, when you look at the league while you were in the league, we always hear as as Chicagoans that Chicago has this stigma. Um, ever since Michael Jordan was in the league, ever since Scottie Pippen was in the league, that they don't want to play pay their players, and that's kind of trickled down to players today. Is there any truth to that? Do you do you just talking to players around the league? Is there like I was gonna go to Chicago because. Zach and them was over there, but I don't know how that front office deal. Do, do you get that kind of feeling when you talk to people around the league about the Bulls? Um, no, I, I mean, yeah, that's 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 kind of something that you know I, that doesn't cross my mind. I think when you think about the Bulls, you think about the legacy that they have and the stuff that you know Michael Jordan has put in place, and it's the United Center, and you know they have great fans. It's a great city, but. Never once does it cross my mind, at least me personally, um, about you know that they don't play players. Right. Was so so you never felt the the vibe even from other teammates or other people that thought maybe I should come to Chicago that uh, uh, that that there was this this perception about how Chicago was that was negative. No, I, I think for me, like I said, you know, yeah. you, you think about all the the positives, you know, when it comes to Chicago. Not too many negatives when it comes to Chicago. I mean, it's one of the the best organization, you know, when things are going well. Right, right. Now, like I said in the beginning, you were a player 
who I followed closely in Sacramento because Boogie Cousins is – uh, my favorite player still. I don't care if you hurt. Bulls, go get them. Uh, so Boogie's my favorite player. So I watched a lot of those Sacramento teams closely. And you guys went through your tur- turmoil. You went through your right. you know, your tough seasons and coaching changes. When you have a coaching change coming in or you feel like there's a coaching change coming in, what's the mindset of the player at that point? Um, we, it, it's, it's not a good situation. Because, you know, everything that you work during the summer was geared towards that system. And you kind of have to put everything on pause and kind of wait and see what this new coach is going to, you know, put in place. And, you know, then it begins to try to have a dialogue with coach and, you know, talk about some of, you know, each other's goals and how you can be on the same page with him and vice versa. But, you know, it's, it's, it's an unfortunate situation, you know. But obviously, if it's for the right situation to work, then it's, it's all worth it. What's what's one of the, the, the toughest things that you have to do when – is it just feeling out the personality of that new coach? Yeah, I mean, it's feeling him out. Like, I think the toughest thing is just getting on the same page and trying to understand what he wants from you as a player. Um, every coach is different. Every coach asks a different role from you. Um, you, you try to be yourself in some way and through all this, but um, the system is different. Yeah. And as a player – you like familiarity. You like you like you like a system that you know, you know, up and down. And that's why some teams that have the same coaches for years are successful because they know what they expect. Absolutely, absolutely. And we we see that a lot with with Greg Popovich and guys like that because the system's the same. Now you right. you you've been uh, under a, a a bunch of different coaches throughout your career. Yeah. Which coach really stood out to you that, that you felt like this coach really has my best interest at, at heart and is really trying to put me in a position to succeed? Um, I think Frank Vogel, uh, Mike Malone, I, I, you know, Doc Rivers and Rick, Rick Carlisle were really good coaches. Um, you know, so I've, I got a chance to play with some really unique coaches and I'll say Nick McMillan. <laughs> Okay, okay. I, li- I like all of those coaches. Now, um, we, we, we're we going through, like we talked about early, the, the quarantine and all that, and so the NBA is shut down. Yeah. Are you still I'm, – I'm assuming you still have frequent conversations with your brothers around the, the league. What is the feeling around the league about starting the season off just going straight into the playoffs? Do, is, there, is there kind of some pushback on that, or have you heard anything about that? Um, not too much. I haven't heard too much about it. I, you know, from what I heard just on the surface is that, you know, they are eager to start the NBA back, um, you know, in any shape or form. Um, obviously, they got to respect certain guidelines and respect what we're going through. So um, I don't think they're giving in right away. But at the same time, you know, they're they're taking their precautions, you know, serious. You know, it's a serious situation that we're going through as the whole united world so i think that's first and foremost that you know that they're focusing on is the safety of people in general absolutely if if something like that were to happen if they if they bring it back and they just start up the playoffs right off the bat do you think that there would be kind of a i I heard doc rivers say the other day that he thinks that there would be basically an asterisk next to whatever teams lost. Say say the Clippers or the Lakers or Milwaukee gets knocked out early. Do you think that there would be that, uh, well, they won the championship, but nobody was ready for the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, that's that's nonsense because, you know, obviously everybody's dealing with the same circumstances. And it's not like you're playing one game to win a championship. You got to do a lot to win a championship. So it's – you know, I'm sure the team that wins it is not going to think that way, but the team that doesn't win is, is obviously going to have some type of, you know, excuse, quote unquote, <laughs> you know, why they didn't win the championship. Right. Is 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 that something you would like to see? Would you like to see the NBA just come back and kind of go straight into the playoffs? It's, it's going to be kind of hard to do that. You know, as professional athletes, we know the playoffs is probably the most high level intensity basketball being played. So it's going it's, it's, to, I think they're going to need to have some games. Before you get to that, they just can't just go right into the playoffs. I mean, it, all, we all know that's that's a tough thing to deal with. And, you know, if you don't want players to get hurt, then, you know, you got to at least give them some time to play before the playoffs. 
Yeah, because I, I know I've seen some of the uh, some of the rookies anyway when, when they did that horse competition like Trey Young. I was I was a little surprised that Trey Young was hooping on the, the rim that he'd been hooping on since he was five years old. You know, like so right. it, it's, it's going to take that, that time to to get them back to normal. What what would be the better scenario in your opinion? Would it be maybe we don't crown a champion for the 2020 season and just go into the next season or would it be. Uh, crown a champion, have the playoffs, and whatever happens, happens. I mean, it's still time now. I think if you can try to get a season in and, and try to play, you know, it's, it's good for the fans, it's good for the players. I mean, why not? But if it's to the point where, you know, you're you're doing too much to just try to get the season in and it's going to take a lot for, you know, people to follow certain guidelines and, you know, I think he's just going to the next season. I mean, it's an unfortunate situation, but, you know, it's, it's no, you know, how should I say this? There's no better feeling than to doing the right thing when, you know, people's lives are at stake. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what, what, what are, have you heard some of the scenarios? Cause I heard the cruise ship scenario. I heard take everybody <laughs> to Las Vegas and Barkley was like, you put everybody in Las Vegas for, for three weeks. They got everybody going to be broke. Are, are there any of those scenarios that, that kind of stick out to you where you think this is a good scenario for these mugs to play in? Like I said, I mean, me personally, I don't think there's not the right scenario. There's, <clears throat> you know, if you do certain things that, if players go here, it's going to be a situation. If players, go, like you said, Vegas, you know, you worry about the gambling situation, but there's there's no perfect situation, you know, right. what I mean? because you're going around a, a unprecedented, you know, situation when people's lives are at stake. So no matter where you play at, there's going to be an episode of something, you know, that may can possibly go wrong, and and that's not why you want to, you know, play the game. Absolutely. Now. Uh, I want to talk about your company, your training facility that you have started up. I, I saw it on uh, on Instagram, and I was like, this mug is really helping people out. Tell us about Pro's Vision. What, what's that all about? Pro's Vision is a training group that um, – a training company, too, as well, that, you know, I came together with, you know, some of my childhood friends, and we wanted to help the – the youth out in the community and Inland Empire and Orange County is where we're based out of. Um, it's kids. It don't matter. You don't have to be a high D one athlete. You don't have to be a guy that's going to make it to the pros. It could be anybody, you know, that can, that loves the game of basketball that wants to learn the game of basketball. And, and we're teaching it. We're out here, you know, every day, obviously not right now because of the circumstances, but you know, before this whole pandemic thing, we, um, we're out here. We're out here teaching all types of ages about the game of basketball. And what I love about it is that we don't, there's no discrimination with us. I think some trainers, they like just to train some of the top athletes and good athletes that are good. But, you know, with us, you know, if you, if you want to learn the game of basketball, you, you know, you come to our company and we're willing to teach that. And we do a little bit of different things too, as well. We don't just use this one trainer. We use three to one, you know, we kind of use like private lessons on a, on another level. So when you're coming in and you're working out with us, you know, we have three trainers there that are at your disposal and can kind of walk you through certain things and they're guarding you, they're playing real defense, they're doing interactive training with you. And it's a fun process, you know, for these players. And, you know, the company has grown because of that. What's the what's the age group for, for players who want to get into that? Is it starting all the way at youth basketball? Yes, all the way from youth basketball all the way up until it, it, we, we don't put no age or no cap on it. You know what I mean? We've had grown men that has to be trained. You know? <laughs> My thing is this, you know, when you go to a dentist, you know, there there's no <laughs> there's no age limit of when you go to the dentist. Anybody can go. You know what I mean? So we know basketball is a sport that a lot of people love no matter what age you are. And, yeah. I mean, you, can, you may not be able to play, play it at a high level at that age, but you know, if you want to learn some things, you know, you come to my company. Okay, okay. I like I like that. I like the no cap on there. I might have to fly out to L.A. and get some training well, in, you know? Come on. We have people fly out of states for our company. Um, let let the people know where they can find you at, where they can find Pro's Vision at before we get up out of here, man. Yes. Um, you can find me on, obviously, on IG, um, Pro's, P-R-O-S-V-I-S-I-O-N, underscore Pro's Vision. Um, 
And we have a website as well. We tap that in too as well. And you can go to my website, um, DarrenCollison.com, or you can go to at Darren, D-A-R-R-E-N, underscore Collison, C-O-L-L-I-S-O-N. So there's many ways you can find us. Uh, we're not hard to find. Okay, absolutely. I love, I love that. I love the vibe. Uh, definitely. I, in all honesty, when, when quarantine over, I'm gonna have to come out there and get some training because uh, my de- my defense got it, but the jump shot need a little work. I'm a little out of shape after sitting in this house. <laughs> <laughs> come on, man. This, we all we taking everybody. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, Darren. I appreciate you for joining me, man. I really do. It's it's awesome that you were able to take time out of the day. You seem like a real community kind of guy. Before we get you out of here, there was a lot of calls for you to come back toward the end of the season. Is there any any chance of you coming back out of retirement? Um, I don't know. You know, I've, I've always open that. I leave that question open because I mean, I just don't know. You know yeah. what I mean, it's a situation where you know I can't predetermine because. You know, the situation that we're going through right now and, you know, I'm enjoying my time with the family. You know what I mean? So we'll see. Family over everything. You can't get that time back, brother. I appreciate yeah. you for joining me. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please leave your comments and everything in the comments below. I'll be down there talking with you. This will be up on all streaming platforms. It is your boy, Pat, the designer. Back at it again. Y'all stay safe out of Chicago. Peace. Thank you.